want to go ahead? All right. This is uh, this guy of four complete. Um, I'm Pink Pajamas. Uh, the runner here is Green Z Saber. Um, and uh, I think uh, Z Saber wants to show off a little bit of a tutorial about kind of how the game mechanics work because uh, things go pretty fast and we actually skip the tutorial sequence. So uh, go ahead and do that. All right. So this is the base. This is where you do most of your setup. You can heal your allies because um, basically the way this game works is it's a strategy RPG that's turn-based and it's isometric. And um, you do a bunch of battles and your health doesn't persist. Your um, health is retained in between battles. So any damage that you've sustained, you have to heal it from this NPC and you can also buy equipment, weapons, and armor. You can also buy healing items. Basically anything that we'll do for setup is gonna be done in the base. So I'm gonna show you guys what combat is like before we begin because like Pink Pajama said, we're not gonna do any uh, tutorial sequences that were previously mandatory. So this is your base panel right here. You can bring out 10 units, 10 of any units that you have. Um, once you bring one out, it lowers the counter. You can also put them back in and it'll re reset the counter. But basically you can only have 10 units out at any given time. Um, you have your move option, which will allow you to move however, however many tiles they can move. And you have your special skills, which have uh, which vary by AOE and range. You can see right there on the bottom left the um, the blue tiles represent their area of effect, and the uh, red tiles represent the range that you can move that the um, attack effect round and um, when you move next to an enemy you can get an attack option which just does a regular attack but most of the time you want to be using skills and unique to this series is the lift mechanic so you can lift enemies or allies with human characters so you can also lift units that are lifting other units. So you can make a gigantic tower. And when you lift something, you can throw it. So you can throw <laughs> your units however far they can throw. That'll allow us to move your, um, your units much farther into the map that they, than they can normally do. And um, these enemies right here are prinnies. So you can lift them and throw them into a... throw them and they'll blow up. So you can do that right there. You'll see that a few times during the run, but that's basically the gist of how combat works. This also has a Cool, um, new to the to this version is the retry and the feature which allows you to reset the map to the beginning so if you mess up it's not a big deal and um, yeah th that's basically how most of the combat in this game works so Yeah, this is the complete version played on uh, Switch, I believe. Yes. Um, and I've done a few runs of this guy of four on PS3, and I'll be chiming in here and there to like talk about some of the differences both between the games and the runs themselves, uh, because there are quite a few added features that makes the run uh, quite a bit different. Okay, before we begin a run, the run we're gonna need to input a an in-game code, which is the tutorial skip code. What it does is 
previously in the original version you had to go through some tutorial segments that were mandatory and unskippable. They're actually full-on battles. But uh, with this code we're gonna bypass all that and unlock... There's also some sequences where things unlock gradually and they also have their own tutorial segment that requires you to do this to do certain actions to get through it but we're not gonna bother with all that so we're gonna put this code in so on switch it's x y b x y b and a so if you did it correctly you will hear avatar say sardines or iwashi in japanese and on the ps4 it's triangle square circle triangle square circle and x but not, I've done that now, so we can begin a run whenever you're ready. Are we re ready? Uh, we should be ready. Okay. So, I guess you can start the timer in 3, 2, 1, and go. Alright, good luck. Okay. There's some delay on my end, so it hasn't started okay. quite yet. Right off the bat, we're going to go to an NPC called the Cheat Shop, which will allow us to get more experience. Right, so the Cheat Shop um, is an added feature to this game. Uh, it was it first showed up in Disgaea D2. Um, it lets you uh, quickly increase the uh the enemy level or uh modify some of the experience money or mana gains that you get uh just kind of the ratios um and you can modify the ratios further the further on you go in the game and uh, what he's doing right now is the menuing with the campaign um so he's creating uh you already start with a uh mage that uh has fire so like the red skull is the red mage but it's just a mage that uses fire and then he's getting a green and a blue one the reason why we want to do that is because um uh, we need to get a star skull and the star skull uh doesn't unlock until uh you get level 15 on each of them. Um, and he also set up a whole bunch of uh, symbols back at the base so that uh, the Red Skull is gaining uh, extra mana for, for every uh, Valvatore's kill. Valvatore's being the main character. And the... and vice versa. Uh, and then the EXP is going to, or you're going to get bonus EXP with, uh, between all of the skulls or mages and, um, Valvatores. So whenever any of them gets a kill, then, uh, the others get some bonus EXP. And we're going to be using that bonus EXP to get the skulls to level 15. Um, and there's also a heart cannon that we uh, set up with Valvatores, um, which means uh, Valvatores will be doing follow up attacks. So I'm going to see that quite a bit here already, where you have. Um, if uh, a one of your own units is targeting something and Valvatores can attack, then Valvatores will do a follow-up attack that doesn't consume any of his turns. So you can actually queue up and do a bunch of attacks on an enemy that Valvatores is right next to. And uh, you can actually have Valvatores do some attacks of some of follow-up attacks off of that and then have him do something else or just do his own attack yeah it's great 
basically you can do a lot more attacks without than you would normally do without using your own action Um, so the reason why we want to use a Mage with Fire is because enemy resistances uh, are are not random compared to some a lot of the other NIS games or some other Disgaea games. Um, usually just it's just one and two I think that have the random resistances. Uh, but here, because the resistances aren't random, um, we know that a lot of the enemies in Chapter 2, and I also believe Chapter 3, are weak to fire. And uh, before we get the Star Skull, which Star is non-elemental magic, essentially, um, we, we need to be able to use some kind of element, so fire is just the best way to go. And the story of this game is the Prinnies are... Valvatars is a Prinny instructor, which basically means he he's training Prinnies on how to behave like Prinnies. So um, when people die and go to Hades, they, which is basically this version's of, version of Hell, they will become Prinnies most of the time, and um, Valvatar is basically it tells, is the one who tells them to say their trademark word dude. However, the there's been an order that came out that uh, um, says all Prinnies must be exterminated, and it, Valvatar doesn't like that, so he's trying to write the course and overthrow the the Netherworld government. Okay, so right here we're gonna do some shopping. I need to buy a weapon for Valvatars and our Red Skull. We're going with an axe for Valvatores. Because it has the highest attack. And uh, I guess we didn't talk too much about uh, the geo panels and the what used to be geo symbols, but now it's geo blocks. Um, so the these sort of color panels uh, has. The, uh, the, the geo blocks have an effect of whatever uh, colored geo panels that they're on, and then if you destroy the block, then all of the geo panels turn that are on that, or that the block was on, uh, ends up turning into that color. And then if there was another geo block, during that change, then it will chain, it will destroy that block and then chain into another one. And then on that previous map, we ended up getting a null block and destroyed all of the geo panels, which causes a um, an extra blast to happen. So that's what you saw there. And then, right, what we're doing now is uh, doing the final map of the first chapter. Emizel there is the boss. Um, so, the AI, when it comes to, like, NAS games in general, is that they really love to attack any of your characters that are very weak and... Essentially, if the, any of your characters can get one shot, then uh, they'll go after them. So we do that on purpose to bring out like weak level one characters to get attacked, so that our characters that can actually do damage um, don't get hit. 
And then, so now that chapter one is done, we go to the ability shop, which any ability is like a passive ability that you can uh, set onto your characters. But also, uh, what we mainly did there is we boosted our skills using the mana that we uh, have obtained from beating the enemies. Uh, and what boosting skills does is it makes it more expensive, but it makes it significantly more stronger to, to use those skills. And specifically with magic, it also increases their range and the number of AOE panels that you can use. So with uh, fire plus one, we can choose to use a uh, two panel AOE and uh, those, the, uh, shapes of those panels are always going to be, uh, the same when it comes to magic. Um, also one thing you did real quick is, uh, a diagonal throw. Um, throwing normally you can only do in a line, but if you time it right while you're going between uh, 90 degree angles, then you can just throw diagonally. Um, there's there are ways to make it easy, so it's not really all too hard to do to pull off. So we had we used the skull to throw Valvatoras up onto the ledge. Uh, so we can get across, so we don't have to do like this entire puzzle. And uh, another nice thing about magic is that it has a uh, really high halt, uh, high, really high height tolerance. So he was able to attack those um, slimes from above with the mage, whereas with Alvatoris he had to uh, go all the way down. Um, so what we're doing is, on this chapter, there there are these uh, two blocks that have a uh, no ranged effect and an HP SP switch. Um, so at the very beginning, we're going to take the HP SP switch uh, on the blue that uh, that the green block has on the blue panels, and then we're going to move it onto the green panels uh, because the enemies on the blue panels have a lot of SP already. And then we're going to set it up so that uh, on the next turn that we, we can uh, go back and forth between whether or not uh, the no ranged block is either on the green or blue panels. Um, because we, we like to have it, uh, because the no range means that, you know, you, you can't do attacks that, uh, have any sort of range on them. Or, like, if you try to, uh, it just won't connect. So, it has to be like one panel of a, like a one panel range. Uh, another thing with the uh, AoE panels that you can do is because the two panel AoE is, has this sort of diagonal thing, you can use it to extend your range. It does cost more SP to do that, but typically two panel AoE's SP usage is not too bad. Um, so what he did there is he bought a few things to get the shop rank up, and then we're going back to the campaign to pass the more expensive stuff bill. And in order to buy uh, better and better equipment throughout the game, you need to buy enough to increase the uh, customer rank. 
and then once the customer rank once you've gotten a customer rank you can go to the campaign use some of your mana to pass this um to pass the more expensive of stuff built to increase the uh, shop rank so that you can actually get those uh, so you can actually get uh, better equipment and so you just did all of that to buy uh, better equipment for Valtoras and the skull uh, he also increased uh, fire to level to uh, plus two which yes. means that we can get three panel AOE, and the three panel AOE is in a line, uh, which allows us to kill three zombies at a time, or at least target them. Uh, the accuracy isn't too high right now, but as we're killing some of these zombies, uh, the stat, uh, the skull's gonna level up, and the stat's gonna increase to get more uh, accuracy eventually. Um, and he also equipped some orbs onto the mage to give him more SP. One thing about the male mages in this game is that uh, while they do more damage than the female mages, they also use a lot more SP. So SP management kind of matters. Um, it's not going to be too much of an issue throughout the run, but it is a thing to know. I have not seen that zombie move away like that before. It's kind of odd. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what, what the zombie is trying to target that it would run away. It's clearly not targeting the skull. Alright, I'm gonna just need to... Okay, well... Let's... I'll just have all the and finish him off. Ah, yeah, goes Kuma. It's always time to bust some balls. <laughs> the uh, we get some war male warriors as just kind of the default unit to lift and throw, just random chunk units, and uh, the default voice of the male warriors. Uh, sometimes they just say they want to bust some balls. Ball being the toughest boss in the game. I think it's just actual balls being busted. Oh yeah, what we're doing for the beginning of this map is throwing a, uh, a geo block to the yellow panels, which uh, gives dispersed damage, so any enemies that take damage uh, on those panels uh, end up getting uh, the damage ends up getting dispersed. Uh, so you can we can do that to kill a lot of the uh, go to kill all of the ghosts without having to. Uh, target them ourselves, and we're going to intentionally set it up so that uh, everything except for Emmy Zul the boss gets hit by it. The issue with, one of the issues with trying to fight uh, all those enemies straight up is uh, the, this is a uh, enemy boost plus 50%, so all of the enemy stats are going to be multiplied going to have a multiplier of an additional 50%. And uh, it's just a little bit too difficult to deal with. So even though we don't get um, any extra EXP money or mana when those enemies die, it's just because we didn't do a specific action to kill them, it's still worth it.
Here we go. We have to adapt the map. Ah, oh, the Fuka map. Oh, we get the la la la's. Yeah, so we're going to, at the very beginning, uh, take the panel to weaken uh, the enemies that are on the blue panels. So it's like the enemy boost, but in reverse, it's weakened. Um, but the other thing that is going on is warp. So at the end of every turn, every unit that is on a blue panel will warp to a random blue panel. And uh, we could get rid of this warp effect, but that also means getting rid of the weaken effect. Well, uh, just, I'm going to try to throw it away. You're going to try to throw the... Yep. I can reach the, it uh, right here. Okay. Yeah, so we should try to get rid of the warp effect to sort of decrease the randomness involved. Uh, one thing to note is that Fuka um, takes half damage to special attacks, which is pretty much what's going to be most of our damage. We're going to be using skills instead of normal attacks for most of our damage. Uh, at least damage that isn't under heart cannon. So, uh, she ends up being really tanky to, and it'll take a while to actually kill her. Uh, we end up recruiting her, uh, at the beginning of the next stage. So, but, uh, we have to fight her for now. Well, the route for this game is still kind of a work in progress. It's pretty much get star magic and use that alongside uh, Valatora's uh, AoE skills, natural AoE skills. Yeah, there's some interesting stuff we do from mm -hmm. run though. So it's not, it doesn't get overly repetitive. I actually got, just got a PB today, right before I was scheduled to come on here to do this. Uh, the danger with using just normal attacks against Fuka is that normal attacks can be countered, so she'll attack back so it does make her kind of rough to deal with in it regardless well we're out of that map <laughs> yeah that's a long one so we're going to start the next map and then exit out because starting this next map uh, lets you get Fuka and we want to boost some of the, or one of her skills. Um, yep. Just for the setup. So we're going back to the cheat shop and we're going to increase uh, enemy levels. Um, so that we can get uh, um, a lot more bonus, uh, bonus, you know, just a lot more EXP money and mana uh, off of these enemies. Um, so the two effects currently are clone and no ranged. We want to get rid of them, but we also want to just damage these slimes. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, that's a retry. Oh, wow. The yeah. worst spot could have spawned. <laughs> Out of every single spot a clone could have spawned, that was the only one that would have uh, prompted a retry.
Also, we don't want to one-shot this geo block because, as you can see, there's a giant slime in the background on the map, and we want to be able to destroy the giant slime because the uh, enemies merging together and becoming giant heals all their HP to full. Yeah, so you just have the merge, the one merge that happens in the uh, fight, you just have that happen at the very beginning, and then because the giant enemies take up five panels, the uh, destroying with the geo panels will hit them five separate occasions and actually end up killing them. And uh, the slimes are heavily physical resistant, but they're weak to fire, which is another reason why we have a fire mage. And so now we're going to get lots of EXP and lots of money. So once we finish this, um, the blue and the green skulls are going to get enough levels that we're going to unlock the star mage and we're going to once this map is over we're going to immediately reincarnate our uh red skull into uh a star skull yep um and what reincarnation is is you can change the character class of whatever you're reincarnating. Or if it's a story character, you can't change their class. But uh, you can change their class. Um, the base stats, that the stats that you get on uh, level up increases. Um, and you can also, it increases based off of what levels they had, and they'll return back to level 1. And their mana will also get reset to 0. But it's a way to get um, extra stats uh, for a cost in uh, levels initially. So when it comes to speedrunning, we know like certain points that we can uh, still be able to uh, get some kills even at level 1 or I guess with the um, with the training yeah, rounds we're gonna do some grinding in a bit so them being level 1 won't matter too much yeah we, we have ways to deal with the fact that they get returned to level 1 is essentially what it comes down to I'll pass the Rose of Queen evil symbol, Bill. Oh, right. Um, so, Rose and Queen, uh, just having it uh, placed on the campaign map, uh, each, squ each square in the uh, campaign area refers to a map that you've beaten. Um, and uh, if you place it on a map if you place rosen queen on My Lord, your orders. a uh, square that you've beaten a level that you've beaten then you have access to uh specific items that you normally wouldn't have access to uh in this case we want shoes which is uh something we can put on to one of our three on each of our three um armor slots and we're going to just buy a lot of slippers 16 slippers in fact because uh they increase our move by one and that's pretty good yep i'm not sure exactly how many but we need at least 15. <laughs> i'm still trying to work out the exact number for that Having an extra move is fast. Um, yeah, but it comes to strategy RPGs. 
Yep. There is a point later in the game that we'll, we'll buy. We'll be able to buy two shoes rather than just the one. So I don't want to overdo it too much. We're also going to be moving that Rosen Queen a couple of times during the run uh, to get better shoes uh, alongside the extra move that the shoes give you. They also give you extra jump. Uh, and we're going to need that extra jump on some of the later maps. But for now, it's just the plus one move that we want. Okay, so I went ahead and ranked up the shop to three so I could buy a Temptress. All right, so we're going to buy an axe, and we're not going to equip it directly to Valvatoras yet. Uh, we're going to go through the item world because uh, we're forced to go through the item world. Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot something, so I gotta get out of here and do that real quick. So I, I need to oh. teach Fenric triple strike. Triple strike, right? Um, so the item world is uh, completely random. And the game blocks you at a certain point until you have a level 10 item equipped and you can only increase the levels of an item by going through the item world. Uh, so we're just going to buy um, a decent axe, or the best axe that we can buy at this point, and go through 10 levels with it right now. We're just going to do that ahead of time. Um, and what we want to do is we want to just go through each, each stage. We don't need to defeat the enemies, but we just want to get, uh, to the panel that, uh, lets us go to the next floor, that, uh, red panel. And we want to do that ten times. Not getting very good luck here. Uh, and the one situation where we can't do that is if there's an enemy on the on the panel and they're in a corner. Um, so we learned triple strike on Fenric to uh, because triple strike uh, causes an enemy to move. Like we can't actually lift enemies on. Uh, We can't actually lift any of the, what are they called, the gate guardians? Gatekeepers. 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 Uh, but we can use triple strike to uh, sort of push them uh, one panel. Oh god. Another corner gatekeeper. Yeah, for some reason those happen quite a bit. And this guy F4. Thankfully, you get uh, five Gensies to exit out, but uh, this is the yeah, first time I've seen luck of this bad. This. Things are going to get interesting once we get out of the item world. Okay, there's a yellow portal here, which is a mystery room. It gives us a random feature. I'm just gonna use this to reset the floor. Oh, we got another Gen C exit to work with. That's nice. Unfortunately, that's followed up with a gatekeeper in the corner. Uh, so I pretty much have to get lucky. We can't really beat the enemies here, especially since we keep the uh, uh, high enemy levels on. So there's just no way that we can beat any of these Well, um, I think alternatively what I can do is if I keep getting all this bad luck, I'm going to just lower the enemy levels temporarily and just beat up the enemies directly. I'm going to do that right now. Because... Uh, yeah, um, for some reason in this game, 
every time you get a gatekeeper, it's got a very high chance to be in the corner for whatever reason. Alright, he you saw him also check uh some of the geo panels. Sometimes there's like a silence effect that can show up that will make it so you can't use triple strike or like a no melee effect. Some effect that will make it so you can't use triple strike can sometimes show up, so you need to watch out for that. And because it's random, you just need to make sure. At least we're not getting that many gatekeepers. As you can see, there's a lot of RNG present in this game that we just have to work around. So because of that, it is hard to get clean runs of this game. Okay, I'm not getting any more cake keepers, interesting. So, <laughs> right after this, the run's gonna get really interesting. So, um... Besides skipping the tutorial, the uh, tutorial skip code also unlocks um, the extra characters. Normally those are maps that unlock during the post game, but the um, extra characters can be fought in the... Like a, the extra characters can be fought once you input the tutorial's skip code. Yeah, so every 10th level in the item world, uh, you can fight this sort of item general, or, yeah, item general, and there's a special stage that is a lot less random. Uh, it has sort of the same layout uh, each time, and uh, there's guaranteed to not be a gatekeeper. So if you beat the general, you can power up your item even further. Uh, but we don't really care, so we're just gonna move by. We just want the 10 levels as quickly as possible. Yep, so now that we're done with the item world, we're gonna put the enemy difficulty back on. Even at the lowest difficulty, I one-shot them, so that's why this strike is useful to have. As you can see, you can get gatekeepers most of the time. So right here, I'm going to pass the Economic Stimulus Act bill, which will triple the experience of the first enemy that we kill. And he's going back and forth in the or in and out of the menu when he's trying to pass the bill uh, to like increase the approval rate. Uh, it's kind of random, the uh, votes that happen during while you're trying to pass a bill. Um, but the reason why we need to, why we're doing it now to triple our EXP for, uh, for the next enemy is uh, we're gonna uh, be we're going to be fighting some characters that are that would be DLC in the PS3 version, but uh, this is a complete version 
Uh, so it's added into the game, and then the uh, they scale based off of uh, story progress, the levels, and this is the only time that we can uh, make them level 99 by having the uh, extra 16. Uh, enemy strength. Yeah. And we strength at 16. So 99 is a level 99 is a very key level because the exp formula, like or the exp gain that you get off of an enemy, is based off of the amount of exp uh, re that uh, is needed to get to the next level. Um, the reason why that's relevant is because the exp formula changes going are starting from level 100, so there's actually a very large gap between level 99 and 100. So when you kill level 99 enemies, uh, you end up getting significantly more EXP. It's like you killed a level 300-ish enemy. Yep. As you can see, uh, we're already at a fairly high level. I already have Valtors at level 73, and my skulls are level 40 plus. Yeah, and we're getting a triple on top of that. Or triple EXP on top of that. So, uh, this is a very fast way to get a level. Uh, and we're getting Pram. Uh, because we want to use her, and then we're going to fight Marona and Ash. They're just Either. characters that are easy to beat. Right. Yeah, we don't really need them at this point. We're gonna delete them right after we get them. And we, we do need want, to delete uh, them. Yeah, we, we do want to get the Banair at some point. Because uh, having her present on the map will boost our stats by 10%. So I'm, I'm going to save her for last because she's not really needed at this point. Also, I'm going I got enough mana to reincarnate my other skull. So we're just going to do that. And I'm going to reincarnate Bram at this point. So you can see that, that um, even though we were a very, we were pretty under leveled compared to the opposition, we are able to kill them because of the hard cannon, just by chaining a bunch of attacks together. They don't even have to do any damage; they just have to target the enemy. You'll get the. You get Valptors to attack them multiple times and just kill them that way. Yeah, you can see all of those uh, additional attacks stack up if you look on the left. Uh, they're also doing uh, combination attacks where if you do a normal attack with uh, Characters nearby, there's a chance that they'll combine and look, they'll uh, do these combo attacks. Uh, and it means that the uh, EXP gains are actually uh, distributed between those characters. Yep. So I'm just gonna do this one more time. Ooh, that failed at 61%. That's fine, we've got mana to attempt to pass this bill multiple times. So I'm gonna get Planair, which is the last character we'll need. We'll actually be using her, because she's got a pretty high movement and she has that ability to raise our stats by 10% just by being on the map. So one of the benefits to doing this run is we'll get Valvatores at a very high level early on, which will unlock his 
most powerful skill, Tyrant Lugu. Alright, so Tyrant Fluhude, um, it has an AoE of uh, three panels in front of him and then another five panels in front of that. And it's also a star uh, elemental or just like non-elemental, not even physical, not even technically physical. Um, so, uh, like say enemies that would resist physical, they don't resist Tyrant Fluhude. And just as an AoE skill, it is incredibly good. Having eight panels of AoE is fantastic. Yeah, and the fact that we can get it this early in the game is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And we're also learning Star and as many characters as we can. Uh, we have two star skulls, and Pram will naturally learn star as well. Um, so, as we boost uh, star, it's going to increase the amount of panels that we can get. Yeah, and now I'm gonna lower the enemy difficulty because we're actually gonna go through the story this time and uh, I'm gonna buy some equipment for our new characters. We now have four characters to work with that will be doing attacking. And I'm gonna equip them all with slippers so they have a, a lot of move. That's done. Now we can actually go do the story maps. Now, since we are over leveled compared to the enemies, everything is going to be one shot at this point. Yeah, so with the PS3 version, you don't really have access to the cheat shop or the uh, those extra characters, so you do actually have to play quite a bit slower for this part. Uh, you still one sh one shot everything, but you have to do some very particular setups to make sure it all works out. And uh, we can just completely ignore all of those uh, longer setups with this and. By not having to do those additional setups, we end up saving quite a bit of time. Also, I need to make sure my star skulls have plus two star by the start of the next map. I don't have star plus two on one of my skulls because they didn't have enough mana from the grinding. Mm -hmm. So after this map is cleared, I'm going to go back and upgrade that. I'm also going to arrange this skill order so that star is on top. Alright, so the reason why we need star plus two is because upgrading that will give us a three panel AoE of that's in a line, and that's conveniently very useful for this upcoming for this stage I'm doing. Right. Um, again, with the com comparison to the PS3 version, you only have one mage available to you, so you can't actually complete this in one turn. Uh, you can still one shot pretty much. Or you, you can one turn a lot of these enemies, but uh, you can't one turn all of them, so it ends up being really quick. 
you also don't have to play episode three safe at all. You can just go all in on this map. Yeah, this map has damage 20%, which means we lose 20% of our HP each turn. And it's not uh, a big deal here. Yeah, because we're over leveled at this point. So a lot of these maps are just going to be spreading out our units and using AoE skills to kill all the enemies. That's how a lot of these maps end up. It's that we just uh, bring out a handful of units, you know, typically about four of them, and just uh, throw out those AoE skills. Yeah, it's <clears throat> there are some interesting maps. So it's not going to be like this all the time. Throughout the early game, it is uh, this is what it's going to be like since we are just so overleveled compared to the enemies. So um, if you want some random facts about this game, um, I have actually done a, a platinum trophy run of this game, and it is very long, the longest in the entire series. Well, uh, two might be a longer game to get all the achievements in, but four definitely is up there in some of the longer the longer games to, to do everything in. It's about uh, it's a little under 41 hours to get to the platinum when I tried it the first time. But uh, in comparison, I've done platinum trophy runs with other complete versions of the Disgaea games and. Uh, the first game has a platinum under 9 hours, and the fifth game has a platinum of under 6 hours. So for reference, when it comes to the leveling, uh, leveling ability in the um, PS3 version, this is where we would first get a Star Skull for the PS3 version. On this map in particular, we would go in with a level 1 Star Skull. And we'd have to play it very carefully to not die. Whereas here, we're just uh, going straight in and one-shotting everything. So I, I want to upgrade my Tyrant Flubu to plus one and my start to plus three because we're going to need Tyrant Flubu to be at least plus one to be able to take care of the boss here. Now this is a unique map compared to most of the other maps in this game in that uh, you only need to kill the boss in the center, well in the very back of the, the map to win. Also, this is the map that you need to have a uh, level 10 uh, equipment on in order to uh, continue on with the story, which is why we need to go through the item world. Yep, and we're never gonna go to the item world again until the next time we do a run, that is. Or if you would ever want to do a post game, it's definitely needed. Okay. 
So um, we upgraded our star to plus three, so we can get enough range to reach the enemies from behind the blue panels, as the blue panels are no entry, which means we can't actually go through them. Yeah, uh, we just got uh, Desko, who uh, proclaims to be the final boss, or at least that's what she wants to be when she grows up. Uh, so we have a uh, so we have a worker. final boss on our team right now. Yeah, this is the episode with the office workers, the, or the ninja-looking the, enemies. Yeah. The ninjas that are called office workers and um if you try to attack them while uh they're facing you um your attacks have uh 50 accuracy at best or 49 percent so you can just miss a lot because uh you kind of need to use ranged attacks on them in yeah, order to uh <laughs> in order to uh play the game quickly so you just have to pray you hit thankfully the um there's actually a half accuracy hit so there's it's a decent chance that you get a nick which does half damage um And that's uh, based off of evasion, but you still prefer for that to not happen. I forget if you can uh, kill these enemies through a nick or not at this point. I'm not sure. I haven't really checked. I haven't had that many situations where things just end up surviving with very low HP. Also the <laughs> this the most infamous map is coming up. Oh four three. This map sucks. It sucks. Uh so the pretty much all of, almost all of these uh geo blocks uh provide invincibility. Um so the only way to progress is to have all of the blocks uh, destroyed. Um, so the way you destroy blocks is by having a same color block. Um, is having a, is throwing a same color block to uh, adjacent to other same color blocks, and you just need to do that a lot of times just slowly throwing these blocks bit by bit and any enemies that are already on top of these invincibility panels you need to throw off of those panels and then attack yeah and if you're just... ever wondering why not many people do runs of this game it's maps like this is, is why But thankfully, the, with the complete version out, it makes it a bit more tolerable. Although uh, maps like this still have to be done the, the old-fashioned way. So, um, there is a bit of a, some tech here. The last group of blocks, the aqua blocks, you don't actually have to destroy them because they don't have the invincible effect. It's an enemy boost effect, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it's like attack and magic range increase, I think. Yeah, it's just some boosts that we don't even care about. Not even the PS3 version do you care about it. You just attack yeah, through you... it. <clears throat> yep. Uh, 
That's where he even got the idea to just attack straight through it in the first place. He just watched my run and like, oh, you can just attack through that. Yeah, so I just need to get rid of the blue blocks and that should be all the block tossing I need to do for this map. I think I'm gonna throw you so that you line up with this guy. Okay, well, we're done with this map. There's not really... There are some tedious stages coming up, but they're not as bad as this one. Now, for this map, you just need to get rid of the blue wall so you can reach the enemies at the back of the green wall. We're not gonna throw any more blocks after this, we're just gonna use our AoE skills to get rid of any enemies that are here. However, to reach the group of enemies behind the red wall, we will need to just break a path for the yellow and uh, red walls so that we can move Valvatores to the back area and just use a blue group to destroy them. Yeah, you can see the... Uh, so, I guess I haven't told, talked about this earlier, but uh, you can't lift um, any of the uh, geo blocks that are adjacent to another one. Uh, so normally what you, like, one thing that, one way to do this is to just, uh, toss all of the geo blocks and, uh, toss the yellow ones and the red ones from all the way from the other side of the map, but because you can just destroy the blocks, it's easiest to do it that way, and because the blocks aren't invincible, they aren't invincibility blocks, so it just doesn't matter. Just destroy them, and it's much faster that way. Uh, another reason that you want to have mages uh, is with this map in particular. There are a few enemies that uh, are pretty far away and uh, have a lot of uh, height difference. So, like those two enemies down there that uh, we targeted and killed. Uh, otherwise, it takes a long time to get over there. Uh, the red panels also do 50% of uh, our HP per turn, only to us, not the enemies. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter too much, though, because they're not going to do significant damage to us. Mm -hmm. So you can tank it at least once. So here for this map, we're just gonna throw three of our attackers on the middle area and have them take out all the enemies up here and we're gonna have one unit go to the left side to take out the enemies that are on the red area. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, so the boss can actually shoot you from above, uh, but uh, we can just throw right in front of the boss and kill them. So that's not a problem. The red panels are also warp, but uh, we don't put... There aren't too many warp panels, so it's not a huge deal. 
and uh, we're also throwing our main attackers onto the blue panels, so that doesn't matter a whole lot. Also, you can't uh, combine the office workers just because they have a unique name. You also can't combine enemies that, uh, or enemy classes that you haven't already beaten. Uh, so, uh, when I was routing the PS3 version, there were very few enemies that I could combine on the first time around that I uh, basically couldn't ever do it. And that okay, would be so all. I'm gonna grab Marona again. Right, so we needed to delete Marona earlier so that we could get her again. Uh, and because these characters are leveled based off of your current story progress, uh, we can actually do that to get Marona at a higher level. Uh, the reason why we want Marona is because uh, she's pretty much our best source of healing. Um, and the reason why we want healing is because of the reverse damage effect, where uh, if you try to do uh, normal damage against anyone that's on a reverse damage panel, you end up healing them instead and then healing does the opposite effect of doing damage. Uh, so because we don't need to be healing like at all during fights, uh, we didn't. We don't have much need to level up our healing. So having Morona available just makes dealing with the reverse damage panels a lot easier. What you can do for the panels is for those panels is you could lift all of the enemies off one by one uh to deal with them but that's slow also in that uh previous stage or if it's still going the geo blocks move uh randomly so the effects uh get shuffled uh every turn Although we don't really care that much. Um, this map in particular is a grind map that we'll be going back to, but uh, for now it's not a very good grind map because the first time you do it, the uh, geo effects are enemy boost instead of extra EXP. But yeah, all the enemies are just kind of laid out in a way that makes it very easy to kill multiple at a time. Yep, and uh, we're going to see why we need Morona for this stage. Uh, yes, we will be using Vesco. I, I want to get rid of the Slumber Cats, because they're not only reverse damage. And then we're going to bring out Morona and start healing the enemies to death. Morona... If you watched the last year's Limit Break, she's the main character of Phantom Brave. So um, the heal effect that she has will kill all of the enemies except Octopuses, but after a few turns they're just going to move on their own. Oh, one of them got put to sleep, that's not good, so I actually have to heal that one. Yeah, you also have this uh, neutral enemy unit attacking them, so sometimes you can inflict a uh, status ailment from time to time. And if the cockatrice come down to attack, then we can just attack them normally because it will go off the reverse damage panels. This is why we want to upgrade um, our skills and we start to become a lot tougher. 
We want to have at least Mega Star to be able to deal with most of these enemies. Yeah, all of these uh, red panels are no range, so we can only do attacks uh, one panel in front of us. Fortunately, those uh, green panels don't have that effect. Instead, it's no lifting, which is not really a huge deal. Yeah, Valvatoris has an AoE skill that uh, does damage on every one of his own sides. Uh, so it's nice to just leave him down at the bottom. Uh, so he can use a uh, bloody hole as he gets surrounded and just hit all of them at once. Yeah, we could use Tyrant Fluid to cover the same area effectively, but it's just more cost efficient SP wise. No, you can't use Tyrant Fluid because it's no range. Right. And this map I have to toss a unit to the very back so they can lift up a geo block that's got no entry which is blocking um, another geo block that has a mighty enemy. Mighty enemy is basically invincible but it only works for the enemies and not you. It's definitely not want something you want to leave around. And after that, we can just kill all the enemies with AoEs with that out of the way. On the PS3 version, this map sucks because you're kind of. You just happen to be at the mercy of a lot of damage ranges, um, and your damage just ends up being not that great with uh, how many enemies there are, plus you have those shamans that uh, decrease your stats uh, by, I believe, 5% for each one that's there, and they're at the very back. So it's just... It's an annoying map on the PS3 version. Fortunately, we're still over leveled, so it's not an issue here. I'll show you power. Okay, this is the pretty map. Yeah, as we uh, went over earlier, pretty explode when you throw them. However, um, in most Disgaea games, enemy movement is random, and it is in this one as well, so this is one of those maps where we just have to hope and pray that the enemies just move um, in a nice way that they'll, you'll see a lot of them group up together. You can lift and throw pernies to make them explode, but if they uh, combine, you can't actually lift them. Um, they still take, uh, they'll still die to chain explosions, but uh, yeah, you just have to be aware of that. Yeah, it's like this one, there's a, you can throw but um, sometimes it's just better to kill them if you can't reach them or if there's just one by itself. But thankfully they're pretty easy. They don't have very high stats even when they merge. When a monster merges, basically what that happens is it this increases their stats a little bit and gives their, them uh, uh, better AoE for their skills. Alright, so now we're gonna go do some grinding. We're gonna grab the unit that was the star of the show 
in the last episode, Cruz Volcanus. And uh, she's basically the buffing unit that we'll be using throughout this run. So we'll teach her Braveheart and Magic Boost. Braveheart increases attack and Magic Boost increases intelligence. Now we're gonna buff up, bump up our um, spells or our star skulls. Because we are gonna reincarnate them right now. I wanna reincarnate them into a ghost. Both of them are gonna reincarnate into ghosts because uh, ghosts have very high base intelligence compared to the other monsters that we have available. So we've done that. And now I want to uh, move Rose and Queen over here, which will be useful later. So now we are going to do some grinding. We're going to go to Lost Dignity. So this time when we come back here, the map is going to have these experience effects. However, the big purple area doesn't have any experience effect, so to get this area to have that more experience, you just toss a yellow block in here and then blow it up. That will change all the purple tiles yellow and you suddenly have experience plus 150%. So at this point, we're gonna boost Valvet Torres. We're gonna magic change Desco with Valvet Torres. Magic Change is an ability that monster characters have, where they will merge with the human character and become their weapon. Doing so will allow us to um, have access to new skills, and the main benefit is the monster and the human character will get shared experience. So we Magic Change Desco, and now we're killing stuff with. Uh, of Torres with her as the weapon, so we're leveling, leveling both Val and Desco at the same time. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, this map is just basically using time to, to, to defeat the enemies. And I'm gonna have to heal SP because we only have enough SP. We use time to do four times before we run out. And I am gonna need to power up Desco skills. And then we'll reincarnate her. So I'm going to reincarnate Desco, and we want attack because that's what she's best at. And I'm going to promote the ghost to a higher tier, which basically just increases the base stats that it has. Yeah, so promotion is a feature that was... Uh added with the complete version. There are higher tiers of every class. Um, and uh, normally you would have to reincarnate the same character to be able to get a higher tier with uh, the better stats. And I believe better weapon skills, although we're not using any weapon skills, I think, in the entire run. Yeah, I mentioned it before, but I have done platinum runs of all the complete versions of this game, of the series. This one is by far the longest. It's under 41 hours at the moment. Uh, both 5 and 1 complete are under 10 hours to platinum. 
The main reason this game takes so long to get the platinum is just because they want you to fill out all of the item collections and get all the pirate ship parts and that is a very tedious task no matter how you look at it. And we can't actually kill all the cockatrices in one hit because uh, if you're right next to a cockatrice, uh, then you have a silence effect, so you can only do normal attack. Me, yep, and I'm gonna put off this ghost now that it has enough mana. So now that we've done that, we can work on the ghosts. The reason why we reincarnated our units to ghosts is so we can magic change Valvatores with them. We can magic change the ghosts with Valvatores and grind both Valvatores and the ghosts at the same time. So I'm gonna do this map two more times, one for each ghost. So when you magic change, uh, every monster has a different type of weapon that they magic change into and the ghost is a uh, staff which runs off of intelligence so we have to use magic boost to um, make sure that uh, we gotta use magic boost to increase the int stat because the unique skills are gonna run off the whatever that the weapon you're holding is. And since a staff is mostly based on int, Tyrant Tulwood will be based on int as a result. Uh, the run doesn't involve giant magic change because it would be too RNG to get. I've thought about it, but it, I just decided it wasn't worth going for it just because it's it takes a lot of mana to pass it and it's too RNG. Even if you can't pass it, it's too RNG to pass the bill. Believe me, I have considered it, but overall the RNG would just be too much. And I wanna make the run more consistent than anything else. Alright, so we have the Wraith available for promotion, so I'm going to promote both my ghosts into Wraiths and do one more grind. Then I'm going to move Bram to the area of the Mana Pyramid so she gets more mana as well. This should be the last major grind that we'll do in the run. So after that, that will just be zooming through the stages. So it's worth noting that uh, you don't necessarily need to grind to be able to beat the game. We're just doing it because it actually makes the run faster. Yes, we have over half the game left to go, and it's uh, we want to be able to one-shot things. So at this point in the game, we can we can grind pretty quickly, so we'll, we just opt to do that instead of having to go do it without grinding and having to deal with enemies taking two or three hits to kill. Overall, in, in this guy game, you, you want to grind more often than not. It also helps to have the uh, cheat shop available to increase the enemy level just by the press of a button instead of uh, passing bills one by one. Okay, so now we are done with our grind. So I'm going to lower the enemy 
difficulty and we're gonna try to upgrade our shop rank to five I have to sell some stuff so I can make room and I don't want to sell these slippers they're still useful Okay, I want to buy enough stuff so that we can get the shop rank to 5. And then after we get the shop rank to 5, we can we can uh, move on. So the reason we need shop rank to 5 is because we need a very specific weapon. Now, um, weapons in this game, they have, uh, some of them have uh, unique properties, like uh, some weapons may, will always give you a certain amount of jump or they may offer like, additional movement. In this case, we, there's a weapon we can unlock at shop rank 5 that will allow us to, that will give us um, 12 jump and we want that it's called art 16 insult so we got it and then we just need to get two of these to equip to our ghosts so i'm gonna be uh, reloading that uh, reloading the shop a few times until we get it and uh 12 jump is going to come in handy for a stage later on in this episode all right now we can actually move on and do the plot so as far as the story is concerned um, Baba Torres and his group are trying to go to the the president of the netherworld they're trying to overthrow him And uh, right now, we're gonna be de dealing with this virus that will turn most of the enemies into Axel, who is the yellow-haired guy that we fought at the very beginning of the game. He's basically the uh, Warden of the Netherworld. So um, we're gonna see a lot of Axel. In the upcoming stages. There's also a character that showed up in this guy too quite a bit. Yeah that's his first appearance and he also appeared as a post-game character in this guy 3 and this guy D2 and in here he's part of the story. So um, he also he does make a lot of cameos in other Nippon Ichi games for some reason. So um, right here you're gonna see the first instance of the Axel clones, the the virus taking effect. So he is you see right here his class is a virus infected. That means he's He's basically uh, one of those guys who will become Axel for whatever reason and uh, as we progress we, pretty much all the enemies will be fighting are a virus infected. I believe they're all technically all uh, infected where they have all oh, yeah. everyone has the voice line of Axel but uh, it hasn't pro progressed quite at that point where they take his form yet yeah that's true they, they all have that class so um we just have to hope that the enemies move in they cooperate and line up properly we can hit most of them with aoe's it's just the name of the game
now we have done that um, this is another generic stage where you'll fight mostly monsters and then you'll see some some more of the axles this time we have three of them and then in the upcoming maps we'll be fighting up the other enemies are gonna look like axel for some reason the blue panels uh have a decreased fire resistance, which is which seems kind of random. That specifically this map they have a decreased fire resistance. Yeah, as another uh, comparison with the PS3 version, you actually have to. Uh, stay back and have all of the enemies come towards you in order to just not die. <laughs> okay, so... Right here we're actually gonna use a Prinny in the run. We get a couple Prinnies at the start of the game, and this is one of the few instances where they'll be useful. Right, so monsters... While monsters can't lift, if you throw onto a monster, uh, what will happen is that they'll toss. Uh, starting this guy at 3, um, that's kind of what they do. And Prinnies have a toss of 6, which is uh, pretty good. Um, the only other monster, at least in main game as far as I know, that uh, has higher toss is Slime at 7. And uh, because we start with Prinnies, we can just uh, use those and that's good enough. Yeah, six move is just enough to get to the other side. So there's no need to make any extra units for this purpose. This isn't the last time we'll be seeing this technique used. I also really want to make sure that uh, you do this map in as few turns as possible because of the clone effect. A uh, clone will appear every turn. That doesn't even give you any EXP. Okay, this time we'll do the toss strategy again, but this time we'll be using Desco because we will actually use her to do the final attack on the group of two axles that are closest to us. Right, so you see those uh, red panels? It looks like our base panel, but it's red. Uh, those are um, reinforcement Enemy. panels. Yep. Yeah, enemy reinforcement panels, and uh, if a single turn passes, then there's just going to be uh, four enemies reinforcing. So you pretty much just have to do this entire map in one turn. Now we're going to buy some Ninja Tabby. We can buy two of them in one go, which is really nice. That's why we didn't want to buy too many slippers. Alright, I think that should be enough. Now we're gonna swap the slippers with Ninja Tabby, because uh, our ghost at least, because we want the ghost to have at least 10 movement. I mean, no, not 10 movement, 60 jump. Which is gonna be very Ninja important Tabby is for the just, next stage. This is just for the extra jump. Well, the shoes do give you extra move. It's the extra jump that we need to buy the better shoes for. And uh, this map right here has uh, pretty large cliffs. And uh, because of all that jump that we got, we can just walk right up those cliffs. Yeah, this is going to be a two-turn map no matter what, because of this strategy. 
And there's also a cloning effect going on, so there's going to be a clone that appears every turn, but it doesn't matter where that clone appears. Uh, we can still uh, take them out, no matter what happens. Okay, and this is where we fight a whole horde of the infected axles, and we also have the real one in the center. Yeah, this is actually just a boss map. Uh, all those axles are extremely low leveled uh, to where they pretty much can't kill any of your characters if they have any kind of leveling. Yeah, they're level 5. And we're over 100. Casually, you would be like, what, 50-ish? I can't even remember. If you were not leveling. Heavily. They don't move in until a couple of turns have passed, so we can just use this time to dispose of all of them. And then just take on the real one last. Uh, Val ends up a little under 300. Roughly, um, he's he's 250 right now. And for a PS3 run, he would end up at around 130 at the end, I think. Because you don't have the cheat shot grinding methods available to you. Okay, so now we're gonna upgrade tank Gugu a little bit and upgrade star and megastar as high as possible i'm also going to need to delete marona i forgot to do earlier she's going to come into play later yeah we need her to join again at a higher level so we're going to delete her yeah deleting an extra character doesn't tempt permanently remove them. You can just do their map again to get them. And because their levels are based off of uh, story progress, uh, they'll join at a higher level. It's such a silly strategy. Yeah, it's one of the, the amusing strategies that I've come up with. But it works. Very unintuitive too. I don't think anyone would have thought of doing this at least in, not immediately. That previous map I did was just the AOEs and don't, just don't go back too much, otherwise you'll trigger the enemies to come towards you. This map we're gonna be putting the attack 50 geo block on the red tiles so we can have enough firepower to one shot these heavy knights who have very high HP and defense. This is also the first time that we're going to be using magic boost on our star users. Because uh, the enemy difficulty really goes up a notch once you get to this episode. Because this is the Presidents, the Netherworld Presidents uh, home. So we basically want to. Um, So yeah, um, you you would expect for the Netherworld President's home, they would have a lot of difficult enemies.
Ooh, that guy survived. Okay, I'm gonna need somebody to throw Brown forward so she can finish them off. Yeah, I think we got a nick on that guy. Now for this map. Um, we have the lonely effect, which means you can only have one unit on the blue tiles at any given moment. So you have to move to the green tiles so you can have another unit traverse the blue tiles. And there are eight enemies here. We have four attackers, so we just have each one kill an enemy each turn, and it's pretty straightforward. And then this upcoming map is one of the harder maps in the game casually. Probably the hardest just because there's a lot of enemies and most of them are fairly aggressive. Well, most of them are pretty close to your base panels, so they'll... Once... there's like a no entry block blocking the way that, but um, once you get rid of it, they'll start coming after you. So fortunately our characters are pretty over leveled, so we can just destroy them in one hit. Although some of them do have, um, some of them can end up on the yellow tiles over here which is evade. So the thing with this game is that um, this game is heavily skewed towards skills. When you power up your skills, the damage multiplier is massive. So um, what happens is skills end up used doing a tremendous amount of damage that. That um, most of the time it's like most of the time you'll be one-shotting enemies if your skill levels are really high. So this game is definitely not balanced in favor of defense. That's why you have to be careful. Uh, <clears throat> even though we are over leveled, it is still possible to end up dying if too many enemies uh, end up using their skills on you. So for this map, we have a map that has a lot of printies. So we'll need to throw some units forward so they can reach these prinnies at the back. And this is where our prinny friend comes in that can throw or toss. So I'm gonna need Planair here because she's got 9 movement and she can reach one, one of the prinnies very back directly. I'm gonna need to do a diagonal throw so we can blow up the barrels like so. Our objective is to get units 
so they can reach the twinnies and throw them so that all the barrels at the back blow up. And that's gonna trigger the enemy AI to start moving towards us. Yeah, after that, it's just a matter of killing off the enemies with our AoE skill. So, um, these guys are called the uh, Seven Yakshas. They're... At this point in the story, what we're doing is we're fighting through the presidents. The Netherworld president's place, so we can finally beat him and take over the netherworld as president and he's got a lot of guardians there's the three boot boots the four devas and what we're fighting right now is the seven yakshas and then there's one more line of defense which is the ten overlords before we get to the president Yeah, casually this uh, chapter is um, really difficult just because of how strong all the enemies are. Um, when I was doing PS3 attempts, it was uh, you didn't have the overlevelness that you have in this run, um, but you could still deal with it with uh, proper setups, which I thought was pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna need to heal SP, and this is where we're gonna fight the 10 overlords. So all the enemies are pretty spread out. Um, the main thing that is kind of annoying is the fact that most of them have uh, are on evade panels and a lot of them have really high HP so, um, the guys folding their arms are our bouncers which is like a, a bodyguard class and the monsters the, the bouncers are next to are the overlords I was referring to So you can see the the monsters don't die in one hit just because they're boss characters and they have a lot of HP. They're also on fade, which doesn't help. I like how these uh special uh bosses actually get random names so you have that uh so you have that uh titan there that was uh this called one white here. ambulance <laughs> <laughs> well one of them was called a uh, white ambulance so i thought it was pretty funny Now we're at the evil office, which is the Netherworld president's place. So we have all these weak enemies guarding the the president, who's at the very back. I don't know why they have such weak enemies guarding him, because they all die in one hit. He's squishy. He ran out. He ran out of the good ones.
Oh, you would think that another world president would have like the best, the best guarding him, but whatever. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna have Bao behind him so we can use the heart cannon effect to kill him. He doesn't even get to use his special skill, which takes a really long time to finish animating. Even with these fast settings, uh, you have to view animations the, the first time that they show up. Um, Fortunately, it's on like what four times speed and that you can set for the animation. Yeah, but still It's nice to have some context at least Just to just so viewers can see how powerful that skill is the reason they added that feature was because of the trophy that there's a trophy that requires you to view all skills in the game at least once so they added that feature to so that even though you have the settings off the animation settings off you can still view the sk skills you haven't seen before and work towards that trophy which i think it's a nice feature to have So what he's doing now is he's uh, just moving the enemies so that uh, they get hit by a seven panel star. Seven panel star is amazing. Yeah, it is. The we'll shape of that AoE is perfect. I think I have gotten legendary serums before I'm I've only done enough to get the trophies in this game. Like I haven't bothered going for legendary or rare versions of everything. That would just take too long. So this map you need to uh, throw all the enemies off of the uh, geo blocks because they're invincible. And again, we're going to throw them in a pattern that makes it so we can hit them in seven panel star. Or. Tarn Flugud in this Tarn Flugud also works. But yeah, that's what I did when I did attempts as a seven panel star. Yeah, I just feel like it's it would be a bit awkward to position them. See this formation, I can hit all of them with time to do good. I even combine some of them. Man, this stage actually lags on PS3. Does it look like it works the same on this version? Um, it mostly lags when you move the camera. Okay, I see. So, it it looks fine most of the time. It just, but you pretty much need to move the camera in order to see everything. Right. Yeah, I haven't touched the PS3 version in years. My PS3 version is stuck in a limbo state where um, it can't, I can't patch it because there's like a shop dupe glitch that I want to keep access to. But um, I've also have like a I have a few updates, but not the one that patched that specific glitch. 
basically I have it updated enough to, so that I could get the uh, Soggy HD DLC character. But that's about it. This map is just use your AoEs to kill everything. Yeah, oh, yeah um, it's uh, pretty simple. So we beat the Netherworld precedent. And uh, the reason why the game is still going is because when we beat the Netherworld precedent, we found out. Oh, this is the, the checkerboard AoE map. We're just going to use magic boost to power up our mages and then use a 7 panel AoE to kill most of the enemies. So yeah, as I was saying, the, when, we, when we beat the Netherworld president, we actually found out that there was a human that was pulling the strings. He calls himself uh, Judge Nemo, and yeah, basically he hates everything. He wants to destroy everything, so he wants to, to get. He was trying to pull the strings so that he could like uh, basically enslave all of the. Um, he's, he calls himself like the ruler of the Netherworld. So, fun fact with this map, even on the PS3 version, you can still one turn it. Yeah, I did have a, a 7 panel AoE that for Pram should have gotten with it. That's fine. Uh, this map has some interesting skills. Oh, I don't have Yonks off level up, so I'm gonna build SP. Yeah, we're at the human world right now because uh, we want to stop Judge Nemo from going with his plan to take over everything and destroy everything, rather. But that's why we're here. And he's got all these, uh, these robots. Or bio suits at his disposal, and he's uh, he's got somebody making clones of demons. The game itself even kind of jokes with uh, that, where chapter seven is the final chapter, and then chapter eight is also the final chapter, and chapter nine is also the ch final chapter, and chapter ten is actually the final chapter. This map should be a two-turn map. The enemies are initially lined up so that you can hit most of them with a checkerboard AoE. So even though that what we're fighting are actually clones of demons, we can still unlock the classes that way. The game basically treats them as the real thing. This one is a simple map. You just it's RNG though. You just use your AoEs and hope you can hit the two mages here. That's uh, they're on the bait panels. Oh that's you just have to now. help you win coin flips. I mean there's the penalty of losing a coin flip is that uh, you have to do your inputs again. Yeah, and this one, we're gonna need to blast away so that we can throw the red geo block down the very bottom. So it'll cause a geo chain that'll destroy most of the blocks. We need to do that because it's got silence. And we got rid of the silence effect that way.
All right, so now we don't have any silence anymore. Now we can move our units forward and kill the enemies. And then you just use your AoE skills to destroy the death enemies that will come towards you. Since enemy movement is random, sometimes they can end up in inconvenient spots. But it's just something we have to react to and deal with. Now we're at the final episode of the final um, stage in this episode. So here we are going to fight the true final weapon, the true final boss. Um, we have Desco, who is basically a failed version of this final boss, story-wise. Someday she'll grow up to be the actual final boss. Someday. Yeah, and this stage has um, an alternating no entry. So we want to get the boss to move closer to us. So I'm just going to use the hard kind of effect to damage her. I think I'm going to do the final blow with Desco. It's only fitting. Now, even though we beat her once, she kind of gets angry and powers up to a large form. But there's only one of her, so you just need to do a big combo with Valvatoris next to her and the hard cannon effect should kick in and finish her off. It's a pretty simple fight. Oh, we memed about this earlier, how the how they yeah, keep, how in the game they keep saying this is the final thing, this is the final thing, this is the final thing. It, the actual final chapter is ten, and this is yeah, chapter um, eight. This it's just the class of the enemy is called final boss. So now we're at the moon. We stopped the um the human world shenanigans that Nemo was gonna do, but now he plans to blow up the moon. And Fenric doesn't like that because he's a werewolf who gets his power from the moon. So we have to go to the moon to stop Nemo from blowing it up. And we have to fight these aliens, which are called androids in the game. But that's going to be what we're going to be dealing with for most of the episode. So this map, we have to blow up that apparatus in the back of the map. It's, it's an ignition device. We're trying to stop the moon from blowing up. So they want to. They had this idea to go for the ignition devices. It was actually a pretty interesting map because uh, the they give you a whole bunch of these. Uh, blocks and panels and all of the blocks are no entry blocks so you need to do ranged attacks on the no entry blocks to be able to continue but if you 
take them out, then uh, um, then the aim is going to move towards you. Also, the ignition devices have significantly less HP on the complete version. <laughs> Yeah, like one thousand. It's crazy. Oh, this like... one has. Yeah. I felt like that amount of HP on the PS3 version was appropriate. Yeah, it feels like it. I don't know why they change it. Instead, it's just these tiny little things that die to a swift breeze to everything else in comparison. And here we have the enemy base panels again. We don't want to deal with reinforcements. Well, it's not too bad because on the first turn you get one reinforcement only. But as you can see, most of this episode is pretty straightforward. There are some geofects that hinder you, but they're not really a huge, a huge hindrance because we have range attacks. Yeah, once uh, when we uh, stop the moon from, we're pretty close to fulfilling our goal of saving the moon from destruction. We just have to blow up this reactor core. And we'll be done. So we've done that, but then there's some enemies remaining are not very happy with what we did, so we have to defeat them. This is the final stage in the episode, by the way. There's, It's overall the shortest episode in the whole game. So for this map, we just want to take out the middle enemies, because when an enemy... When a monster magic change with magic changes with an enemy, their HP will heal to full. And the enemies are kind of spread out, so we'll just leave the two monsters on the sides of the own and let them magic change, and we'll just take them out next turn. Yeah, overall it's uh, pretty simple. So, now we've saved the moon from falling. Unfortunately, it, Judge Nemo like it starts to grow angrier and he uh, he ends up getting so like, full of hatred that he triggered this, uh, this uh, device called Fear the Great. And now we're going to need to go to Fear the Great and stop him. So before that, we're going to need to recruit a couple characters. We're going to need to recruit Prism Red. And then we'll need to grab Morona again. We're recruiting Prism Red, not because we actually need to use him, but uh, because he has a good weapon. At this point, because not yeah. only are their levels scaled upon story progress, but their equipment too. So essentially, we just uh, beat them up and take his stuff. It's also a good we way also... to get money in the post game, by the way. 
you can just beat them, get their equipment, sell it for a lot of money, and then delete them and re-recruit them again. So we're gonna equip Valvatars with the Hades Blade, and uh, which gives him uh, over a thousand attack. And Ram will get the Sorcerer Rod that Morona was holding, so you can see it's pretty significant. So we're gonna need heal. We're gonna need to upgrade Mega Heal for Morona. We'll be using her again because she's got. Uh, there's another map coming up that has the reverse damage. Also want to move Rosen Queen down here, and I will delete Prism Red because we actually don't need him. Yeah, the game outright says this is the final episode, so this is the final episode. Everyone, let's go. So we're the inside the final episode. And all of the uh, enemies are like dark counterparts of normal enemies. They all have like a maniacal screen when they start taking their turns. And you also get to see bye bye panels. Yep, yeah, bye bye. Where... Yeah, the strategy is to block, to like park your units on the these spots, and then help the enemies end their turn on the bye bye panel. Which means they explode. And this map is pretty straightforward, you just use your AoEs from the base panel and they will all die in three actions. I'm gonna need to heal after this because I did lose a couple units and SP can be a problem going forward. So we want to get rid of those mages that are on on those pedestals. In the PS3 version, I had a really funny strat here uh, because I was limited with the number of mages I could use. Uh, there was a uh, height issue with some of them, and so I ended up having to create uh, some blocks to fix the height issue so I can actually take those mages out with ranged physical attacks. Yeah, it's pretty simple in this version. It's a two-turn map most of the time. Now, this stage is where we need Barona. Yep, just so like this... before, we got the uh, reverse damage. Yeah, it's the succubus on the yellow blocks that has it. And it, it'll take two mega heals to defeat her. Yep. Faster than taking that yellow block on the very right all the way down, which is what I did, PS3. And the other yeah, thing is it's just, uh, yeah. oh, the other effects are just uh, extra attack, uh, healing HP per turn, and then HP SP switch. Yep, I lifted Morona just in case she, the Succubus would attack her. But she didn't. Okay, I'm gonna go buy some arrow sneakers for Valvatores, because uh, 
we need to increase his jump. We need to be able to walk up some cliffs. So this next map actually has a specific uh, block that you can stand on to work from the bottom to the top. Um, so it's not actually faster, because you have to end turn, all the enemies move, and then there's going to be reinforcements, and you only get one character at the very top. So that's just not really what you want to do. Uh, instead, you, you just get a bunch of shoes and then take everything out. We're just walking straight up. Okay, so that did two shot them. So yeah, it, up to this it's just a matter of taking out the reinforcements. So we're almost done. This is the second to last map. There is actually a thing you can do with this map to get a, the most difficult ending in the game, but it requires Glavators to be level 500 at minimum. But we're not going to do that here because we're probably going to hit overestimate if we uh, try for it. All these enemies are gonna do a magic change in the when we end our turn. So we, we wanna take out the group of three enemies that are on the left and right sides. And then the ones with the giant monsters we'll leave for last. So now we're going to do some art cannon shenanigans to defeat the remaining enemies and we will finally face Nemo, the final boss, and end his uh, malice once and for all. Okay, so this is the final map. So we have a bunch of Malice androids. Oh, I should probably heal SP. No, it, it is a big fine. Yeah, so Nemo, the final boss, gets bonus stats based off of how many other enemies are on the map. Um, and we'll cause a new one to appear every turn. Um, but uh, as it turns out, lifting is pretty strong. So we can just have him lifted and use only one character per turn to completely shut him off. Yeah, he also doesn't move on the first turn, so we can use that to our advantage to bring a unit close to him. So we can pick him up and throw him. This is gonna be the last turn. So we're just going to build up a huge combo and ending it with the magic change skill, martial transformer which is a B power skill. That's why I was bumping, powering up this skill with Desco because we're going to use it right here to finish him off. And that's the final boss. And time should be right now. GG. Yeah, so that's 2 hours 18. That's not bad. Um, as an aside, this, one, this run will be at RPG Limit Break, the live event this year. This, this run, like I said, is 
still a work in progress, so I'm sure there's some a lot of uh, improvements that could be made. So, so if you do like the Disgaea games and wanna and think you could help out with it, with uh, like improving the run or the route or just suggesting incentives, then then join our Discord for this guy's speed running. And I, I will be working on this game quite a bit from now until limit break. There's definitely a lot of room for improvement for sure and I would definitely like to see more people show up and help out. Yeah, I'm gonna post the link for the Discord in the chat. And I hope to see most of you there, or some of you there. But, um... I think that's all I really want to... That's all I had to say, um... Look forward to a much better run, or route, come limit break. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs>